する。お前の地元にスライドする。スライドする。Imagine if my small business blew up overnight and I woke up to some sales. Boost this video so people who like my products can find me. Algorithm. Where you at, bitch? Cause I'm tired of posting viral content and getting two and a half likes. We finna fight, ho. Got no behavior. What's up? Thank you for making it through our interlude. That was another sponsor of this channel or someone that we support. H to N. We're gonna put their um, Instagram page under. Everything is all good <laughs> with guerrilla warfare. Only the chosen will understand where that came from. Now let's move forward. We're going to get into the ex parte reading. Let's get to it. No more delay. I hope you guys are having an amazing 4th of July. You're out there with your family, loving each other, taking care of each other, being good to each other. You know how that goes. Let me pull up the document real quick. Again, thank you for being with Grace Levi, your hood court interpreter. You know I made up my own name. Yeah, whatever. I share my own title. Okay, now let me pull up the document. Make sure that I have it. There we go. It's about to say where we at. So we did start reading this yesterday, and we can start uh, where we left off, or we could kind of just start from the beginning. Okay, and I think I'm gonna start from the beginning because yesterday we had the computer voice on, and we were trying to test it out. So let's put it up. Shout out to um, our mods. I love you. Thank you for riding out with Grace Levi. We blow up together. You already know. I'm honorable. I love your support and I'm grateful for you. All right. My first mod was Miss Valerie. Thank you, beautiful. I hope I'm keeping you entertained. Now, let's get to it. We're going to put the transcripts on the screen. Mm -mm -mm -mm. I'll play some music anyway so now here you go you have the transcripts up there and we're going to get to it i'm going to put myself a little bit more bigger on the screen i want you guys to be active in the chat um definitely leave your opinions leave your thoughts because i will be stopping and reading them and also putting them on the screen okay it is what it is it's, it's a family affair I'm not at the cookout. I'm home. So I'm going to act like I'm at the cookout. It's a family affair. Once I get out of here, I'm going to light up the bar fire, chill in the back, read a little bit, listen to the scripture. I'm going to enjoy myself too. Okay. Happy holidays to the ones who actually, you know, <clears throat> participate. All right. So let's get into this. This is the state versus Mr. Hughes, Kendrick. Nichols, Ryan, Stillwell, and Williams. Transcripts of the ex parte in the chambers of Honorable Uriel Glanville on June 10th. Can you hear me? Hit the like button. You know I'm going to break this down differently different. And I'm going to try to get through this a little bit faster. You know how I do. If it's laws that we should get into, I'll, you know, read them. But I'll just reference them to you, Okay. Let's stick to the facts. <clears throat> There's no laws in this anyway. So the hex ex parte meeting started at 9, 10 a.m. Present present were Judge Glanville, Assistant District Attorney, Love, Miss Bumpus, Court Reporter, Miss Weaver, Investigator Antonio Long, and Rashid Hamilton. Okay, allegedly. And we know that it was more officers there as well, according to what Miss Bumpus testified at least four and two detectives, okay? So I guess these were the two investigators, <clears throat> excuse me. So the court reporter, this is the, co the court reporter. Okay, I'm ready whenever you're ready. Love, thank you. The concern that we want to bring to the court attention as the state was twofold. 
One, we want to have the opportunity to press upon Mr. Copeland with representation present that he faces. And we want to give him the opportunity to ask whatever questions he wants to ask before we sort of. We had, well, now mind you, when I stop, this is the reading. That's why I think some things are really missing from this transcript. So the court reporter, we love you, but something not right here. We had to pull, we had to pull him in the courtroom when the jury came out. The second concern, so basically her concern is that uh, what he actually testified and that she had to pull him out of the courtroom on Friday. The second concern that I have is that I want to bring to the court attention in line with the concerns that I expressed on the record on Friday. I don't know what advice counsel may have offered or may offering that is their right and their business. As it relates to the testifying, However, I do not believe the criminal exposure is a concern that is within interest is being spoken about in the um, protect, protected and protected. So Mr. Um, Melnick relied, um, relayed to Ms. Hilton on Friday, okay, and that is the prosecutor, on Friday that he never heard the statute of 24-50507, and on Friday he sent the email. I don't know if he intended to copy still on this email. Okay, so still was, and, and the other attorney was copied in on this email that was sent by Mr. Melnick. Okay, so this is what I'm telling you. I think Mr. Melnick actually made them aware of this. I don't know if he in, unintentionally put my name on it, but he sent an email to Mr. Still and the lawyer, the other lawyer with me and Simone copy where he said, this is the communication that I received from Love regarding Copeland. My response was, whose interests are you protecting? Yours or Mr. Stills? Um, oh, Mr. S yours or Mr. Stills? Whose client? Which client are you protecting? Who client? Yours or Mr. Stills? Or Mr. Schartz? That's the other attorney. So basically what he was saying in the email, Love had basically concern of what he was trying to say like basically who are you trying to protect them which one of them or are you trying to protect yourself because of what you're going to hear mr um malachi i'm gonna buy melnick i keep wanting to call him malachi melnick mr melnick says okay so my response is who interests you are protecting yours mr stills who client who client are you protecting who clients yours mr stills mr ashards he wrote back and said, you are going to get him killed. You have made him. You are making him a target. Fuck you. I had to say that with the tone. You have made him. You are making him a target. As quote, fuck you from Mr. Melanie is what he wrote in the email because he was concerned for Woody if he testified. Because this is on open forum. As I mentioned, all of these gang people are out here. They want to know who's connected to who. And Woody was, they, what the prosecutor was bringing out was even more than what Woody was saying and allowed them to put pieces of the puzzle together. So given that his concern is that by testifying, at least that one that he conveys to me in writing is not his concern. He's, it has nothing to do with exposure from the state. And if that's his concern. So she's like, okay, well, we're going to disregard that you say you can, I can get him killed. He has no exposure from us. He has no risk from what we're presenting him. We don't want him locked up. The court. Now the court, when we say who's the court, that is judge. That's Judge Glenville. Okay. So the court, um, he's being, um, <clears throat> he's being who's concerned. All right. And this is Miss Love. Mick, Mr. Melnick, if the interest that he is protecting is Mr. Copeland's freedom, he did not convey it by asking us what exposure does he face in the testifying. In fact, it, if he had concern that the testify, testifying will get Mr. Copeland killed and he is not communicating with us, his communication with counsel for defense, it was seen that he knows of things or something that we don't know, but you know now. 
And this is why it was even more important for still to be there. And anyone who received that email, because they were talking about direct correspondence that even went to the defense. Okay. Um, additionally, and I will let Ms. Bumpus tell, he said, if Mr. Copeland testifies, he no longer represents Copeland, which is a straight, is strange because if you were interested in your client, then it will seem you will want to be there for him while he testifies. This is the court now. Well, he is on vacation this week. Miss Love, I understand. This is why uh, he has Miss Bumpus here. And he has said what he said. And as I read the statute, the things that is, and I will read the statute about the particular situation. And I was reading our rules of ethic rules, rules of conduct for attorneys. And it is clear that if an attorney there if, if, if there's attorney dash dash, there were two things that were happening. So mind you, I'm reading straight, straight. There are dash dashes in here. So if you hear incomplete sentence, that's because the court reporter did not finish the sentence here. OK, so um, you hear what Miss Love is saying. She's talking about the ethics of how the lawyer is supposed to conduct itself. Mr. Melnick, not in one con time considering her behavior. It was been going on through the trial. One, Mr. Melnick had told me that he wasn't Mr. Copeland's lawyer. So he's she's been told that he wasn't Mr. Copeland's lawyer by Mr. Melnick before. So she's put this on the record, and there's still an instinct that they're saying Mr. Melnick represents him. But he said he's not his lawyer. You see, listen to this. Mr. Copeland had told Miss Hilton that Mr. Melnick wasn't his representative. So even Mr. Copeland told him that. And then rather than Mr. Copeland reaching out to Mr. Melnick, Mr. Melnick apparently was in communication with Mr. Still and Mr. Sharks. And Mr. Melnick reached out to Ms. Cop Mr. Mr. Copeland, injected himself in this proceedings. Now, she's saying that that email injected himself into the proceedings. Now, I don't know if um, Woody went to Melnick and Melnick just responded with an email mad, but this was what I assume. It. So this is what they're saying. What were the discussions? Okay. Okay. What we were discussing was in no way matter. Mr. Melnick was representing Mr. Copeland on and that, that there was nothing there was there. Hold on. That is where we are not allowed to speak with the person when they are in representation by counsel. So basically what he's, she's saying, what we are speaking about to Mr. Copeland, and this is a prior and she's acknowledging that he had no representation at the time. She's saying what we were talking about, we were not allowed to speak with persons when they were not represented by counsel, but she wasn't represented. Mr. Mc uh, Melnick was not, could not have been represented Mr. Copeland in anything we were talking about because we were talking about this case and this trial. Now, <clears throat> this is indicating that the prosecutors had communication with Woody at some point way before the trial. And Mr. Copeland was um, not represented. Woody slash Copeland was not represented by Melnick, by words of Copeland and Melnick, but allegedly Melnick sent this email. All that aside, this is still Miss Love talking. All that aside, we would like the opportunity for the court to address Mr. Copeland and Mr. Clo Copeland's standing representative, Miss Bumpus is and uh, Miss Bumpus. And then it says Miss Bumpus is looking at me. Like no, it says Miss Bumpus is looking like. So um Miss Bumpus then says, I'm listening. Um, they put a little like expression in there. They like Miss Bumpet is looking like. I'm listening. This is Ms. Bumpus. Now, Ms. Love says, with his standing counsel present and to allow Ms. Bumpus the opportunity to explain to Mr. Copeland everything that I have just said. His concerns outside was with the um, longest he can stay in jail. What I relayed to her is that the statute says until he purge. The court by testifying. So the judge intruded and said by testifying, purge, testifying. Miss Love, his contempt, his contempt by testifying. The court, yeah, 507 is a little bit different. So I mean, incomplete sentences. She's not, he they didn't put everything that the judge said here. 
Okay. This has to be redacted on purpose. There's no way that they missed this. Miss Bumpus, so until the end of this, this is Miss Bumpus, so until the end of this, like how long can he stay in here? And they're saying until he purged the court, he can be here until the end of the trial. Miss Bumpus, that is what I said to the end of the trial, the longest. This is Miss Bumpus asking. Miss Love, no, it's not the longest. Okay. Now, this is, I believe, when Woody is not in the room. OK, because I think that you're going to see a transcript where they go out or something and get him or talk to him because she's Miss Bumpus is saying he's going to ask me what time, like how long he has to stay here because she already know he doesn't want to testify. So Woody like, OK, we got to be in jail for two years. I can do it. That's how serious it is that Woody was willing to stay in jail for two years. Miss Love, no, it's not the longest. Even after the grand jury, if a person has been subpoenaed to testify before grand jury and after the grand jury has what it is convened, has left, has left, the person can stay until the person purged itself of contempt by testifying. So even after grand jury, the proceedings are over. If the judge wants you to testify, you have to testify. The statute literally says that. So that's Miss Love. Ms. Bump as well, I'm going to look it up because it was my understanding that it was till the end of trial. Miss Love, nope. Ah, here it is. Literally the words of the statue. And so the court, he could be in there for a while. Let's put it that way. Either way, dot, 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 got to be retracted to me. I'm, I'm at, this is mine because the court says, this is Judge Glanville. He could be in there for a while. Let's put it that way. Does it sound like somebody's working with Miss Love? Here goes Miss Bumpus. I just want to be able to give him something. The court, I know, I know. It's kind of statue say, you know, that you purge. But I can't keep him in there indefinitely. He said, I can't, allegedly. I've got, I got to kind of, you know, is dot, dot, dot. No more of detail of what the court is saying. Miss Bumpus, right. That is all that I want to know. Like, how long does he have to stay in here? The court, you know, the whole thing is that he can. He has the keys to his own freedom. And that freedom is just giving his testimony. Then he's purged it. That's, that's per Judge Glanville. Miss Bumpus, right. Miss Love. And you know whether that testimony is, who knows what we believe it to be, but you know we don't know what it is. We can't talk about it. We don't, you don't know. I mean, things are missing from this. I mean, we don't know what he's going to say. We have an idea. We know what he's told us. So she went from saying, we don't know what he's going to say. You don't know what he's going to say. Um, we can't talk about it. And, but we have an idea of what he's going to say, and we know what he told us. So that right there highlights basically Woody's concern of who's going to determine what's the truth when he's on the stand and what's perjury. You see what I'm saying? Miss Bumpus, yeah. All right. Miss Love, and of course, if this is his, our concern, I know the court says essentially you immediately you um it, it um it immediately that you dot dot that Mr. Um Melnick probably told him essentially you should testify that you're not going, they can't do anything with your testimony. So Ms. Love says, and our concern is that if you if his our concern is that if his and I guess she's saying her concerns is that his or the lawyer told, um, basically told um, Woody that, you know, all you have to do is, <clears throat> excuse me, essentially you should testify and that they're not going to basically hold you in um, like contempt of court if you testify. So that's what she's saying. I hope that's what you and actually, um, Mr. 
Melnick told them. So that's what love is saying to her. I had to put that in, pers in perspective because the way this is, is kind of ridiculous. But what we overheard being said, on the contrary, Ms. Love said, but what we overheard being said, they are going to hear me. And if we were, uh, and if we were going to expose uh, Copeland, and she said, so instead of y'all telling him to testify, y'all told him that we gonna hammer him. Miss Bumpus, you heard that? Miss Love, yes, yeah. Mister Melnick told Mister Copeland, we're gonna hammer him. The court now to be now. This is the judge now to be fair. I think Miss Bumpus, as an advocate for anybody, has got to tell him. He's going to face some pretty significant cross examining. So the judge was like, Well, I don't really find too many problems in her saying that. She got to tell him that, that he's going to get cross examined. Miss Bumpus, yeah, I think that's what it meant. The court, I mean, he's going to face, he's got about 10. So he's like 10, probably 10 lawyers that's going to be going against him. Either way, he, he's not represented on the defense or the prosecution side. Miss Love, so. <clears throat> Um, so he meant the defense is going to hammer him. So that's what he left. So he meant the, the defense too. Miss Bumpus, no, just in general, he's going to be, it's going to be a ha da da da, you know. Um, Miss Love, he knew that. He had already been expressing that. The court, this is the judge. But I mean, I think that if he's concerned about that, well, you know, but it's all in the message, in the packaging of the term, I think. Mr. Copeland, you know a savvy person. You know he's a savvy person, but you know he is certainly going to be subjected to a thorough and spiffy cross-examining. So basically, that's what the judge say. And it seems like they know him. They know Woody's personality. Miss Love. And the other thing is that Miss Bumpus cuts her off. Can I just say something in the attorney in attorney Melnick defense in response? Just for the record, Miss Love, yes, Miss Bumpus. The reason that he doesn't want to move forward with representation, what I have been told is if decided to if if he decides to testify, it is that he does not feel like he can. He does not know what was said outside of his presence, so he doesn't feel like he can adequately represent him or counsel him because he doesn't know what was told to the state when he wasn't there. And that's the same concern that still has. He needs to know what's going on so he can know how to represent his client. You can't just go in there willy nilly and don't have have a conversation with people. And then like, I, my, my lawyer, this is what I said. This that the lawyer wants to be there. He says says nothing when you retain me. Does that make sense? So he was like, "This is why you're going to hear Mr. Nell Melnick basically says if you testify, I can't represent you." And it's not because Mr. Melnick is representing himself or trying to basically save himself he can't do it adequately so now miss loves replies but the thing is that the only thing that he should be concerned about is criminal exposure or disposure to keith copeland has criminally and there's nothing so he said the only thing he should be concerned about is if he's going to go to jail the rest of that killing dying it has nothing to do with it, literally. This is what she's saying. There is literally nothing. The statue is quite clear that we can do, that we can, what we can do to him about blank, blank. The only thing that would put him in harm's way is if he lied and refused to testify after being ordered to do so by the court. And again, you hear Miss um, Bumpus talk about, I mean, I mean, Miss, um, sorry, Miss Love talk about, well, we don't know he's on uh testify to but we know what he told you and we know what you don't know what we don't you know all of that don't know right here falls under if he lies and by lying we don't mean like oh i think you're lying you know it will be have to do like you know something obviously you you know because we can always impeach because if he literally purges himself that's something different so he said, well, if he said, basically, they can impeach or perjure him. Impeach um, happens, he won't go to jail. Perjure, he's going to go to jail. But he literally, but if he literally perjure himself, that's something different. We can't help that. We can't control that. We will only say, tell the truth. 
I don't care how bad it is. Just tell the truth. And the more truth and the more he talks, the more people life is in danger, allegedly. So, you know, like he said, I don't go down to the police station, the court. Like he said, he said, like, like, he likes, like, like, okay, like, for instance, this will be where he can, um, inconsistent statements will be grounds for impeachment. If he continue to do things like I didn't go down to the police station. He said, I didn't go down to the police station. They took me to the police station. You see what I'm saying? That's grounds for impeachment because we're inconsistent statements. So she kind of said that there. The court. And I take part of his, uh, and this is the court, this is Judge Glenville. And I think part of his challenge, Ms. Bumpus, may be that you, you need to assure him, look, I'm going to be here. So the judge is telling Ms. Bumpus what to do, how to handle her client. You need to reassure him, look, I'm going to be here. And if you think that they're going to ask you any questions, that's go um, they'll, they'll begin, that will begin the state or the defense is asking you questions that's going to bring out other crime that you go into, dash, dash, dash. He's going to be able to look at you and say, can I have a chance to talk to my attorney? He says, so all you got to tell him is that I'm here for you. That's what he's telling you. Tell him that, Miss Love. Exactly right. That's all you have to do, Miss Bumpus. Mm, okay, Miss Love. See, but that is just it, Miss Bumpus. No, he's not. Just tell him he's not going to testify, Miss Love. Hold on, hold on, hold on. That is just it, Judge. The problem is that there being an assertion that people are representing so basically she said the problem is that the people who represented him blank 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 and she's talking about defamation she's defaming some lawyers right now and they blanked it out okay that's what she's doing and saying what the lawyer's doing towards him for him and they blanked it out and then it goes on to say and i'm not talking about you and that's what she said what i'm saying about what these they're saying it's not about you, Miss Bumpus. And Miss Bumpus was like, uh huh, okay. Miss Love, okay. Now, this is Miss Love now. Um, there's been an assertion. So he said, uh, this is an assertion that people are representing his, um, they're the biggest concern is his best interest, and that they're, they're just, and that that's just not the truth. And Miss Bumpus is saying that he is not in a position to do that. So he's saying that they're talking about Mr. Um, Melnick. That's who she's talking about. She's defaming allegedly Mr. Melnick and saying that he's doing it for his own benefit because he's on vacation or whatever. And that's why he want to pull himself out. It's not in the best interest of Woody and Mr. Well, I'm, I'm giving you the reason why Mr. Melnick pulled out. He like, I can't adequately represent you if I don't know what you say. I need to be there. Okay. So here goes Miss Bumpus. No, I'm not saying that. I'm not in the position. I'm saying that the agreement between Mr. Copeland and Mr. Melnick, who I'm standing in for, is that if you choose to testify, I'm going to get him to sign a paper that says that this discharge Melnick as representing that it, as per this agreement. And I can't do nothing about that. She's like, that's all I'm here to do. That's all I'm here to do. And he got, she got pulled into this. Miss Love, that sounds weird. That does not even sound like someone, something that Mr. Copeland in Mr. Copeland's best interest. That sounds like protecting someone else's best interest. If you're talking about, I can't blank blank. I ain't going to go into it blank blank. I'm not going to represent you. So she's some things missing out of there. I don't even know what to do with that. She's like, I don't even know what to do with that. What basically what she was being transparent for and what a lawyer should do. It's like, well, what do you mean you can't represent him if you don't know what he said? Just don't matter what he said. We have what he said. You come and let us run a train on him. Allegedly. Miss Bumpus. Well, he said he doesn't know what was said. He said, that's what he's saying. Miss Love, it doesn't matter what he said to us. Miss Bumpus, right, right. Miss Love, it doesn't matter. And he doesn't, he didn't even ask us. He didn't even inquire. What have you all talked about? 
he has been talking to Brian Still and um and uh I'm saying I'm, and Max, the other lawyer. That is, and he's not talking to us. And in fact, nobody want to talk to them either, right? You see, like the other lawyer, Mr. Um, Melnick, don't want to talk to their asses either. And in fact, Mr. Copeland asked to speak with us. Mr. Melnick barges in and gets between Mr. Hilton and Mr. Copeland and literally keeps us from talking to him before he gets called to the stand. And that's troubling. Hell yeah. He's like, wait, don't talk to my client. I need to be there. And Miss Love don't like that. Miss Bumpus, well, I think what happened was, and I'm saying this because I previously represented Copeland previously on on other uh, previously on other stuff. So I know when this, I know he, this is just what I think. So based on her representing Copeland and being involved, I think how attorney uh, Melnick came involved was his representation of others because he took my place, Copeland fired me and hired Melnick, and then this came about. So basically he was saying that um, Ms. Bumpus was Copeland lawyer in other affairs and she ended up firing her on other affairs and taking Melnick as representing on his other affairs. Mr. Copeland goes into court not thinking he needed a lawyer and he ended up being held in contempt on Friday. So by Monday, he needs a lawyer. He has a lawyer. He calls Melnick. Melnick, I don't know when he sends this email, but it could be between that time when Copeland probably got in contact with him over the weekend or the family. I'm putting my assertions in here because I'm making this make sense. So this is when Melnick is somewhere else. Copeland doesn't have an active case or hearing for anything that he's charged with, so he didn't need a lawyer. Melnick seems to be allegedly too going on leave as well. So I don't know if the cases that he dealt with Copeland is already finished and done, but Copeland must have reached out to Melnick while he was locked up. So at that point, Col Melnick not available. He sends Miss Bumpus, Miss Bumpus. I'm saying her name wrong, sending her just in representation when Miss Bumpus was fired. She don't really have nothing to do with Copeland. She's just helping Melnick. Does that make sense? Does that clarify what happened? And then you will listen to the attorney's um, podcast. And she said she was going on vacation. She was her outfit. She was going on to getting ready to go, whatever. And, and she thought this was going to be something short. And that's why she goes into saying and. Basically, she can't represent him. She don't, she don't got nothing to do with it. And the judge tries to force her. So are we making more sense of this? Hit the like button. I'm going to get through a few more pages. Do you like how I read it? I'm trying to change personality a little bit so y'all can hear it different. It sounds much better than the actual voiceover. All right. So now we're going to go into it. So Miss Melnick, uh, that's that was the breakdown of that interaction. And this is Miss Love response. Miss Love. In his criminal matters that he had, but that's resolved. You see what I'm saying? Miss Bumpus, but when this case started, Melnick called me and told me that he was representing him as a witness at the beginning. I can assert that. So I don't know if it was at the beginning of the case or when he just got in trouble on Friday. Miss Love, Melnick has never in life. Okay, so, oh, yeah, okay, let's get to it. Okay, let me not add too much assertions. So, Miss Love says, never, Melnick, never in life. Miss Bumpus, this is two years ago. He said this. Miss Love, Melnick didn't, as a matter of fact. So, basically, I think the reason why Miss Love is assertion never, he never represented him because the communication that she had with Woody was not supposed to happen without the presence of a lawyer before. Whatever interactions that they had before he stepped into court was not supposed to happen without the presence of a lawyer. And that's exactly why Mr. Melnick don't want to have anything to do with it. Does that make sense? And Ms. Bumpus is putting on the record that he's he been dealing with Mr. Melnick for two years ago. And Ms. Love's like, no, 
Melnick did not. As a matter of fact, less than two years ago, when Copeland was sitting in jail, sitting in jail for something else he had done, Melnick said, I don't represent him. He told me, I don't represent him. And people were in the room. He was on the speaker and he told me he didn't represent him. Was it a paper put in, Ms. Love? No. I just added that. Now he ultimately did come about to represent him. But when were they trying to get I guess like she's trying to figure this out. Like, when did this happen? Because there is so much procedure errors and wrong ethical doing right now. She's even seeing more mistakes on her side through this ex parte communication. Does it make sense, y'all? Now, this is Miss Bumpus respond. Something, yeah. Miss Love Copeland was like, he's not my lawyer. He said, Ms. Love said that Copeland even said he's not my lawyer. I don't have a lawyer. He's not my lawyer. And then, Ms. Bumpus, are you talking about recently? Ms. Love, Ms. Love. So recently, Copeland said that Melnick was not his lawyer. So Bumpus is trying to say, when did he tell you this? When did y'all talk? Because Ms. Bump is trying to get caught up. She's like, okay, right. Ms. Love, when Copeland was in jail, Melnick told me, he was not, he wasn't his lawyer. Uh-oh. But our understanding was that Melnick was his lawyer for those criminal charges. And so the person that came in and argued, or at least stood for him on the bond and then on his subsequent pleas was Melnick. So if you saw Melnick and all his other proceedings, why do you think he was going to call Melnick again? That he didn't have access to a lawyer and that possibly you should not have been questioning him or talking to him. But this is continued down what Ms. Love is saying. But I don't know whose interest he would be representing when he's not talking to us about what we spoke about to Copeland. He could ask us and we could tell him. <laughs> right. You know, so I don't know why he would withdraw his representation of him if he has interest in Keith Copeland. Then why would you pull out? He said the court. That doesn't make sense. He, she, so the judge is agreeing with love, Miss Love, at the point where he would face the most feral if that it is his concern. If his concern is that I don't know what they talked about, so I don't know what blank 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 they left that out. And the court follows up by saying, "This is Glanville." And I thought that Mister Hill, that Miss Hilton had a list of questions for Copeland anyway. So he's like, I thought it was all like uh, constructed already. Miss Love, she did. The court, well, how come y'all can't? He's not putting it. The court is giving them more suggestion on what they should do. Like, and he probably is blank, 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 blank. They are literally redacting what this can't be the full transcript. That's why we highlighted the damn court reporter today. We had to make fun of her because this right here is either redacted or she severely messed up. Now, this is Miss Love. Miss Love, he didn't ask to see those. He didn't. And not only that, redacted. I'm going to just put redacted where it's blank, blank. The court, well, you can't, you all share with Miss Bumpus. Basically, can't you just share the questions? Miss Love, well, Miss Hilton has already shared it with Mr. Copeland. And we certainly will share it, generally speaking. So they're not even trying to give it to Ms. Bumpus. The question is, Ms. Bumpus, can I read the email that Mr. Melnick sent to me? I don't know if this will help you understand what he said. It says, hey, Kayla, I, I wasn't able to see Keith today. Kenneth, he didn't see um, Mr. Woody. He said, he went in on Saturday and tried to talk to him before his flight. But I have talked to his family. So at first, uh, Kenneth was going to testify, but has now decided to take the fit. He may change his mind on Monday. If he does, then his agree, um, his agree, he has agreed to discharge me as his attorney. This isn't out of bad feelings, but I was not present when he met with the DA office, so I can't really help him with his testimony. And then he gave me the discharge to, and told me that if he decides to testify, then he's going to sign this. And that's what Ms. Bumpus brought. 
So it seems like it was already a plant vacation for Mr. Melnick. Um, um, Woody got locked up on Friday. He tried to see him on Saturday, but he couldn't. And at that point, all he could say is, listen, if you testify or you talk to them, I can't represent you, you know, because I don't know what you're going to say. I don't know. And it seems like Woody like, OK, cool. I got to make the decision. Now, this is Miss Love. And that's just that. Um, it's like you never knew what, know what someone's going to ask. And if he's concerned about putting him in legal jeopardy, this is Miss Love speaking, then he retracted it would seem like he would remain and allow Mr. Copeland access to counsel when Mr. Copeland is concerned that he's about to walk into an area that puts him in legal justice. That is not the original email as well. The concern for Mr. Melnick is that you're going to get him killed. Not legal justice. They keep talking about the immunity or immunity. You're going to get into that. But that's not Mr. Melnick's concern melnick's concern remember that this is how they twist and mutate what's going on and continue just to focus on one thing when you said something completely different okay miss bumpus you can't switch how it gets called see so she's like you can't switch that that's not what he said miss love see that's not Miss, Miss, Mr. Copeland's best interest. That's in the defense's best interest. When you say switch it, how is that called? What does that have to do with anything? Miss Bumpus, I don't know. Maybe he's saying that he can't do it because he can't be, um, he can't get a refundable ticket. This is Miss Bump, but she threw that in. I don't know where that came from. Miss Love, this is Miss Love saying, this is not what he said in that email. Now you're going back to the email, what he said. But you're not saying that he feel like his his client his client gonna get killed. But she goes back to say that's not what he said in the email to you, and that is not what he relayed to the court. And his concern has nothing to do with that. The courts, he was very much retracted statement. Miss Bumpus, I tried to go back and watch as much as I could. So Miss Bumpus, like, listen, I'm trying to get caught up on what's going on here. The court retract his statement and then it goes into tell me what he was retracted that he was going on vacation and i said well you inserted yourself in the case i said really you need to come on monday so basically this is judge glenville saying that he had contact with melnick and mr melnick the, uh, the lawyer told him that he's going on vacation he can't be there and that the judge said well i don't care you need to be here on monday you inserted yourself miss love so he can't be so he can't force mr copeland to discharge him just because mr copeland decision to testify the court i think you are in um you are in until it's done i mean you know and miss bump is like who me what the hell? How'd I get? Oh, damn. The court. Yeah. I mean, that's just it. If he testifies, you've kind of got to uh, retract, retract. Miss Love. And frankly, Your Honor, I know that if a person faces criminal contempt, that they are entitled to representation if they want to, just like he should be represented when you was giving him cross examine or questioning him before he came into court but we're going to shut up. This is being a civil contempt matter, okay? Now, the court, not necessarily. Anybody who faces contempt can get counsel, all right? I mean, you know, not anybody, but anybody could. Everybody could, but he's like, I don't want to disagree with you, Ms. Love. But if you feel face contempt, even you see that still had the right to a lawyer. That's why you have Miss Merchant come in and say you had a hearing and everything, and then you just found him guilty of everything. You can't do that without representation. So this is Miss Bumpus. I can't say I can't say how long this is going to take. Miss Love, it might take days. Miss Bumpus, uh. So hold on. Um, yeah, it might take days. And Miss Bumpus, like, oh my God, what is going on here? Like I'm caught up in here. Miss Love, this is her response. And see that this is just it. I don't mean retract. I think Miss Bumpus is put in a peculiar position. She's not the one that stood up and injected herself into this. 
they reached out to her and she did him a favor. But ultimately, it seems that if Mr. Melnick is stalling and attempting to delay and hamper and hinder our proceedings, then that it, our proceedings, because it's the court's proceedings, not yours, our proceedings, and that it is a problem because that has nothing to do with the best interest of Kenneth Copeland and that it has nothing to do with Kenneth Copeland exposure to testify. So basically, she's like, get him on his conduct. Don't even pay attention that he said that his client life in danger. He's not able to listen to what he tells you. So he won't be able to help him on cross examine or nothing. No, just get him on a technicality because he's fucking up our proceedings. Excuse my language. That's what she's saying here. So just to answer the question, and this is continue, Miss Love, just to answer the question about what he is exposed to, the statue is very, very clear. It literally says that no testimony or any evidence required under the court order or any information directly or indirectly derived from the statements, testimony, or evidence shall be used against the person in the proceedings or prosecution for a crime or offense concerning which is testi testify or 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 produce evidence under the court under the court order. So under this court order, they say even if they produce evidence that they can't they can't go after Woody. But this is on the state level. That's the immunity he got. Remember that. And he says that is says everything he got on the stand and said. And that that's as if he just said everything. He'll be protected. The court. This is just Granville. He started talking about the unrelated crime, which is what is the biggest thing I think he's probably thinking about is that, yeah, that a lot of stuff that could uh, ask him about. So basically, one thing will lead to another. One thing will open another can of worms. And that's what Woody is afraid of, not only for the crimes or, or the possible things that he can face as criminal, but on the streets. But on the streets, everybody's watching this. So the people who had someone killed, found something else about, they're watching. And this is possibly why Tay-Tay got killed. Does that make sense? So this is the court. Again, he said he, he, he started talking about other unrelated crimes. And this is what's the biggest thing that I think he's probably thinking about. And, and the court is acknowledging that Woody is nervous about this. Judge Glenville is acknowledging this. And that's why I think Judge Glenville's tone totally changed, especially after someone passed away. It's going to be a little bit more. It's more to this. We're only on page 17. Hit the like button if you like how I read it, how I give my expressions to make it make more sense, okay? Miss Love, right, okay? That's it. Here goes the court again. That is not known to a lot of people in that you retracted. You know, he could also invoke his Fifth Amendment with the advice of counsel if it was some other particular crime so they're saying that oh now the judge is still trying to educate miss bumpers and say well you he can invoke the fifth amendment if it has something to do with a crime not related to the case but everything that they put out is going to say it's related to the case because it's rico and rico is abstract one thing led to another one thing it could be um subjective not objective it could be a suggestion that you have connection with this and then it's, it's, it's entwined in a RICO case. So it's very obscure to pull this Fifth Amendment right out. He would not be able to do that in particular instance. And this is Miss Love. But even if that, we wouldn't do it. We're not going to do that. The court, even that, he still has to testify. He's just going to testify. This is what Judge Glenville says. Miss Love, literally, right, the law says retracted the court yeah i mean anything he testifies to retracted miss love retracted we do this miss bumpus okay and then about the delay or the stall isn't it true or isn't it not true that he had a leave filed since december so he's saying that mr um, melnick have a leave that has been filed since december i don't know what date that is or maybe this is it but this is the response from Miss Love. She's like, I don't give a damn. Miss Love, we have nothing to do with any of that. He injected himself into this, and actually, Woody pulled him into this, and he probably got felt the way, just like how still love his client, I guess. He felt the way, like, y'all about to get him killed. Okay, this is what I'm thinking. And the court, like, yeah, 
See, the problem is retracted. Miss Love, he stepped in the court, retracted. Then we get involved. I don't know. You have to, you have a lead, retracted. Miss Love, right, you, retracted. I'm sorry to sound like this. The court, this is Glenville, retracted. And unless you file the leave into this case, you don't have a leave for my case. Miss Love, right. Miss Bumpus, okay, okay. All right, Miss Love. And he did not do that, the court. So he don't have one. Miss Love, Mr. Copeland's been a witness and a name on this witness list since retracted. The court. So since he said, well, I represent him, I'm like, okay, well, you don't have a leave that's filed in our case. So the court, um, Glenville is saying how in our case, oh my God, he said in our case, that is not your case. He is literally showing bias right here. I just caught it. So this is Judge Glenville getting in like, yeah, and this is what I told um, Melnick. He, he emailed me and I told him he don't have a leave and he should be here or somebody represent him. And that's why you here. You can tell the personal feelings into this. Our case, Miss Bumpus. Okay. Okay. Miss Love. So, so he did this to himself and he did it to you. All right. That's why you're in here. But we have to retract it. You know, that is just where it is. And I don't know that retracted. That's just where we are. So she's trying to put pressure on Bumpus and just try to like ease her down. But like, well, that's why you're here. And now the pressure's on you. We're going to keep moving. Miss Bumpus, so judge, you are going to make me stay if he, choose, if he chooses to testify? The court, I am because retracted. You're his lawyer. You're his lawyer. You stood in the lawyer at this point? Miss Bumpus, your honor, I don't have a problem with that. I'm just like retracted. I'm not ready, Miss Love. If this is Miss Love saying something that's retracted, the said she's giving her more suggestions to control the manner of the court. While the defense is nowhere around with this, okay? The court, there's nothing for you to really do or be ready for. I mean, here's the thing this is just Glenville. I um I think the only thing you got to kind of ask him is, look, here's the questions the state is going to ask you. All right. Is there anything else that could hurt you that could that they might ask about? And as long as you have knowledge of that, then I think that you are fine because the state only going to get into this. Now, the reason you don't want to know what's going on to hurt you is the defense no, more than Keith Copeland than anyone else. So he says, now the reason you want to know what's going to hurt you is the defense know more about Keith Copeland than anybody else, allegedly. This is the judge trying to reason her into feeling comfortable. So, and she's like, you're probably, he probably like trying to hint like you're good with the defense. So, cause she already hint that they're talking to the defense and not prosecution and this is the judge still coasting in this so there are probably kind of retracted all right miss bumpus what about if they said i can't do it what if i said i couldn't do it then um mel nix needs to come back right and i'm going to be in trouble because i was only in for monday and that's what i was told and that that was given specifics i was given specifics of what i was going to do retracted. Miss Love, if Copeland said retracted, I don't know what Mr. Copeland wants. It's his choice. Miss Bumpus, can he say he doesn't want Melnick? Miss Love, he can say whatever he wants. It's his choice. Miss Bumpus, but the judge is saying blank, 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 retracted. Miss Love, I don't think that he can be forced to have representation if he doesn't want it need it or say he wants it because we have offered we have done everything to clear him of judicial exposure he's not retracted basically trying to say his life ain't in danger there is nothing we can say retracted he could lie but that puts him in you know retracted which is perjury so 
basically, um, do you see how this is flowing? This is ridiculous. Now, um, Farrell. Now, the court says Farrell. Ms. Love says Farrell. But, you know, he can talk about the crime that he could then be prosecuted for. This is what um, Ms. Love says, the court. That is that is involving this or some other place. Miss Love, right. Miss Bumpus, I understand that. So he said he could talk about the mother crimes, but that's for here in another place, basically. So the judge is finishing Miss Love's sentence for her. Miss Love, and we can't use his testimony to go find evidence to prosecute him for the stuff he talks about. Basically, he is literally shielded, Miss Bumpus. I would have to agree with you that I don't think that this is his concern. Isn't that what you said? So this what she said. I'm trying to tell you that's not his concern. And you even said that's not his concern about being criminally exposure. So why you keep talking about it? Why is nobody talking about this man life in danger? So here it goes, Miss Love. Well, the court said that blank, 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 retracted. Miss Bumpers, no. I was saying, I was saying with Mr. Copeland not testifying, you said you don't think that his concern is criminal exposure, or you don't think that this is what he's worried about. The court, this is Judge Glenville. Do you think that he's fearful for testifying for other reasons, like for his personal safety? And this is where you have Mr. Uh, Glenville, Glenville, the judge acknowledging that okay it's something else with this man don't want to testify he'd rather go to jail but they're going to choose to ignore this let's keep reading miss bumpus right so let's read what the court said again do you think that th that he fear he's fearful for his testifying for his any other reasons like for personal safety miss bumpus says right miss love that is what that that's not what mr melmick said to me in any email i put up pulled up he never said that he said retracted miss bumpus but you don't believe that miss love retracted you are going to get him killed that's what he said that ain't going to kill him that ain't that um he said that's what he said we ain't going to kill him so miss bump is like we're not going to kill him and she said she's basically changing the words to say that um mr melnick said that the, the prisons is going to kill him but he's saying you're going to get him killed in generally so miss you see how miss love is so she used technology so much okay this is why we do this so you can understand technology too miss bumpus see i don't know anything about the email which you're talking about miss love we ain't, we ain't gonna kill him I can show you the email, but we're not going to kill Keith Copeland. So who is he talking about? So what are you trying to do? The court. This is collateral second and third order effect. You know, let's pray it doesn't happen, but retract it. This is the most two important places that I want to show you on this, because this is why I believe Judge Glenville tone change. After this young man, I'm going to put him on the screen, has died. This young man, we're just going to put it up there because I have to say rest in peace, Tay-Tay. I think that's in this transcript, this is the time prior to him dying that the judge knew that it could be some casualties related to Woody's testimony. Okay? Does it make sense? Welcome to Urban Politics where you got Grace Levi breaking it down in lane text, helping you understand law interpretation as a legal, legal nursing consultant. All I do is research law, case law. I love it. And this is why I break it down in lane text for you guys. And I make it a little entertaining. Okay. Now, this is what I wanted to highlight that there's a possibility that Judge Glenville had an inclination that some harm will come to the witness or have third party collateral, which he states here. He says, he says, Miss Love, we ain't gonna kill him. I can I can show you the email, but we're not going to kill Keith Copeland. So 
Who is he talking about? So what are you trying to do? The court. This is collateral second and third order effect. You know, let's pray it doesn't happen, but retract it. Miss Love, I mean, obviously he retracted. So she's probably acknowledging that he should have some concerns. He was in the gang. This is my assumption in this retracted statement. And this is the court that has the intro retraction. First, he has to give testimony, though, for, the, for any of that to even happen. And this is the court like, well, well, he has to give testimony. Let's just get back to that. I mean, that's what he has to do. He got to give testimony, whatever it is, good, bad, or indifferent. Good, bad, or indifferent, I should say. Miss Love, so we would like, with the court's permission, they haven't brought him over. So Copeland wasn't even in all this time we've been talking. And he was supposed to be the first one up. So I guess they went to get him. They might be over there with him now, the court. Is he here now? Miss Love, I don't know. The judge exits the chambers at 930. Literally, they were talking all this time without Mr. Copeland being there. Miss Love, now, we would like to just go into another courtroom and talk to him. They want to separate him again. They want to start off by separating him, period. Give you a chance to talk to him and give you the opportunity to explain this to him. So they want, uh, I think, Bumpus to talk to him at this time. The court reporter, we're, we're off the re record. So whatever they're saying right now, Love is telling Miss Bumpus what she should do. And it went into a brief research, re recess. They come back in at 930. Miss Love, this is Miss Love addressing Miss Hilton. And that's Miss Hilton is her buddy. Miss Hilton has been communicating with him. And I, she, so this is the prosecutor who has been communicating with him. Who is him? That is Woody. I like to grab her from downstairs and have her come up. The court, where is Copeland? Um, Mr. Chamberlain, they took him upstairs to the tank in room nine, the court. Okay, can we bring him out? Retract it. Can we retract it? Chamberlain, um, your chambers is being used. I mean, your court is being used. The court, let's bring him in here. He like, bring him in here. And Mr. Chamberlain, all right, so let me see if I can get that done. The court, let's bring him in here. Okay, thank you. We'll just bring him in here. The proceedings um, stood in recess from 9.34 to 10.03. That's when they went to get Copeland. Mr. Copeland entered the chambers at 10.03. Also present were Judge Glenville, Assistant District Attorney, Ms. Uh, Hilton, Ms. Bumpus, the court reporter, two investigators, Deputy Houston, Deputy McPherson, Sergeant Brown, the Sergeant Hill, and the Fulton County Sheriff Department. So I put 12, 11 individuals plus the Fulton County Sheriff Department. I don't know who that is. 11 people marched Copeland in, or he came into being around 11 people in this situation, minus Ms. Bumpus being his representation. The court, okay, Mr. Copeland, can you let me know I got a hearing problem? He said, can you let me know? He said, can you let me know? I got a hearing problem. So Mr. Copeland, Woody coming in on some bullshit. He like, I'm gonna let you know I can't hear. Okay. Ms. Bumpus. Okay. He said, she, he said, I can. He is hard of hearing. Um, The court. So he's saying that Woody's hard of hearing. The court. That makes two of us. I got a hearing aid and that comes in the 27th of January. I mean, June. Um. So I'll try to talk loud. It's okay if I, Mr. Copeland, yeah, I can read lips. Is he deaf? Oh, I'll read deaf. That made me, I feel, don't let me be all starting feeling bad for um, Woody again. All right, so the court. Okay, good, good. Mr. Copeland, good morning. Mr. Copeland, good morning. The court. All right. I just wanted to bring you over and let you talk with Ms. Bumpers and see if there were any things that you needed to talk to your counsel or Ms. Hilton or the state or the courts before we bring you out to this morning because it is retracted, retracted. We would like to hear your testimony. And that is kind of where we are at this time. So is there anything you want to ask, Mr. Copeland? 
Well, I want to speak to you personally that I have never been truthful a day in my life. This is Woody. This is Woody. He like, I just want to start off by saying I have never been truthful a day in my life until I just made that statement right now. I don't comprehend none of this stuff that's going on. Tell me what he's slow. Right here in this statement, Woody is setting up a defense of basically not understanding or being competent for the proceedings, procedures. Okay. Mr. Woody is smart. Okay. I've been noticed that, yo. So the court, okay. Well, the only thing you can give is a truthful testimony. I mean, whatever you know is whatever you know. I mean, it is that, Miss Hilton. And what we will say, Mr. Copeland and I, we have talked about this. I'm not sure what your concerns are, what concerns that you have expressed to Mr. Um, Melnick last week. But if you are, now last week, this is from Monday. And they've been, they, I don't know if it's over the weekend or last, she says last week. And you will hear that Miss Hilton, Miss Hilton had communications with Copeland without Mr. Melnick being, being there. But if you are, if any of you are concerned dealing with being locked up for anything, you can't. We already told you that. Like there's nothing like that can happen. And it says the feds and that's retracted. Ms. Bumpus, well, that's not retracted. So exactly what I told you, he can be indicted on a federal level. And I think Ms. Bumpus said, well, that's not total immunity. I'm just adding more into this allegedly because these things has dash dash. Anything when I say retracted, it has the dash dash. Ms. Hilton, it is true. Um, Miss Bump is because so she's because basically Miss Hilton said basically that's not true what you're saying and Miss Hilton's like well it is true Miss Bump is no I said that this that's not his concern Miss Hilton so she's saying bump the charges I'm not even worried he's not even worried about that Miss Hilton if his concern is safety we need to know that like that's not expressed so we don't know what the concern is so that we can try to resolve the concern how many times are you going to say that y'all gonna kill their client. This is what I'm saying, Mr. Copeland. And I have had conversations with you before. I understand some of his concerns is potential criminal liability, hence why we gave you immunity. The federal statute of limitation is done. The statute of limitation is done. And that is not totally true because the federal st uh, statute of limitation vary by case and crime. I mean, by crime. So that is not true what she's telling him. So there is nothing like I'm um I nothing like I researched this weeks again and again. Both these statutes of limitation for what you and I talked about which is in 2015 are before are done. You cannot be prosecuted for anything testified federally or statewide immunity period which is not the truth. So if there is a concern that is none that is none because of you cannot be prosecuted. The federal statute of limitation is five years. So anything in 2015, five years would have been in 2020. Anything statewide is four years. It would have been 2019. Finish. No criminality concerns. Next concern. What may happen in the streets? You know what we have talked about. What we can do as far as living in all of that. We have had this conversation. So I'm trying to express to you, um, we don't want you locked up. So she's just like, okay, if it's concerned, we could basically, we had a conversation about your concern. So you know what we could do. And I don't know if that's pertaining to protective custody or whatever, but you can't put his whole family in protective custody because you see there's been a history of several family members' houses being shot up. So, I'm trying to express to you, and this is Miss um, Hilton. What's his name? Yeah, Miss Hilton, dark skin with the braids. So we're trying to express to you that you don't. Um, we don't want you locked up. We don't know how many times I have got to tell you that. What I got to say to you is that we don't want you sitting in the cab or wherever they got you because of this. You know what we want. 
you know you want to talk to me on Friday before you walked in the court. We were able to talk. If you still want to talk to me with or without Miss Bumpus, I'm here, but we do not want you in custody. So they're talking about when Mr. Um, I guess at one point, I don't know where Mr. Melnick, when was he there? Was he there on Friday? Because there was a point that they said that Mr. Melnick, Ms. Love said Mr. Melnick interjected himself when the state was trying to talk to him and she was mad about that. Okay. But she's, this is Ms. Hilton saying, I don't, we don't want you in custody. You will not retract it. This order. So according to this order. I don't know if you kept your copy of the order, but this order says that you are immune from prosecution of anything. Literally, judge, you might want to close your ears for this. Do you hear this? If you confess to a murder on the stand, if you don't have any independent evidence outside of what you said on the stand, you are immune from prosecution from what you said. So she's telling like, if you commit murder, if you say you commit murder on the stand, the only way that you're going to be prosecuted if we have evidence. So she's telling like, well, you say you commit murder, we're going to prosecute. That's what she's saying in here. So again, I don't know what is the what's being communicated to you on Friday. I have no idea. But what the state has assured you, which I have assured you in the previous conversation with Mr. Long, as I said in front of Ms. Bumpus, and I told you that it is within the order to say. Okay, so let me just reread what Miss Bumpus said so y'all can see because they Miss Bumpus said if you you say you kill somebody, they said, and if we don't have evidence, um, if we don't have any other in independent evidence outside of what you said on the stand, you're immune. Listen, you see that? So he's not totally immune. Listen, and she's telling right in front of his face if they're not paying attention. So the court interjects, this is Glenville. And that is direct or on cross-examine, Miss Hilton. And that is on direct or cross-examine, the court. So if you are worried about what the defense may ask you because they may know your business, if they ask you about things that you might think might have the liability with, you can be you can't be prosecuted for any of those, except if they have evidence against murder, as she said. Mr. Copeland, I got family members watching this trial, and I don't want my nephews and them hearing the things that I have been involved in. Think you I, you think that's okay, Miss Hilton? But I think that is a separate conversation you can have with them as an honest individual. Like, look, nephew, I done lived a life that I don't want you to live. Don't go through what I've been going through, quote unquote. But that's not. That's something that you have to do outside of being in jail because that's better conversation you can have with your nephew in person. But they should be, they just shouldn't have to come to the cab jail because you are being held in contempt, putting more pressure on him, using his family. You see the manipulation. You can have that conversation with your nephew tomorrow in person. You can have that conversation with them. You can have the conversation with anybody, you know. What's coming up this weekend? Why are we in jail? What are we doing? It's like, why? Why? She's saying we, like him and her on the same side. No, don't, don't try to manipulate Copeland. Copeland said, but y'all did this intentionally. This is Copeland like, what do you mean? Y'all did this intentionally. And that is that immunity agreement. Miss Hilton, no, we did not. You and I had this conversation, Mr. Copeland, on Friday morning. Mr. Copeland, this is Mr. Copeland's line. You knew my child's birthday was next week, Miss Hilton. But what I did tell you, when we met um, with one another, I said to you, redacted, you asked me, what is the one thing that is going to get me in jail? Didn't you ask me that? And what was my response? If you pleaded the fifth. And that is exactly what you did on the stand. So she told him that on Friday. Mr. Copeland, this is him responding. This is Woody. But what did I tell you before I got to this point? This is what he's saying. I told you the whole time Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, 
and they retract what he said. He's been telling them Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, before Friday came, and they put that, gave him immunity. He's been telling them that he was going to do the fifth, allegedly, because they retract this statement. You, you hear this? This is interesting. Hit the like button. Miss Hilton, but I told you you were given immunity. No, you ain't tell him till Friday. Miss Copeland, and um, this is Mr. Copeland, that I was pleading the fifth. So it said blank, 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 retracted that I was pleading the fifth. And this is Mr. Copeland saying, I've been told you this day, this day, this day, this day, that I was pleading the fifth. Miss Hilton, no, you did not. Miss Copeland, Mr. Copeland, and it's Woody. I told you every day I was pleading the fifth. Every day, Miss Hilton. No, you did not. And we told you, retracted. Mr. Copeland, I told you my concerns. Miss Hilton, and we said we can give you immunity. And you say you were concerned is what they knew about you. And when you said that, I said, well, you know stuff about them. And then I said, whatever your concerns are, we can give you immunity. Mr. Copeland, so I didn't tell you I lied on them to get myself out of the situation. He said, so I didn't tell you I lied on them to get myself out of the situation. Ms. Hilton, you said you were a liar. That's what you said. You said you were a liar. Ms. Bumpus interjects. Was this recorded? When the hell did basically like when did this happen? Miss Bumpus is looking at them go back and forth, and this is and she's like, What? Miss Hilton, no, 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 no. Miss Bumpus. So she said, No, no, it wasn't recorded. Miss Bumpus, and did he ever say that Mr. Melnick was his attorney? Miss Mel Miss Hilton, no. This week, retracted. When we first met you in the car on Friday. We asked you, is Mr. Melnick your attorney? You said, he's not my attorney. I haven't even talked to him. When we met in the car, what car? Because Woody was not originally in jail before he came to testify. Woody came from his house and got in jail on Friday. When was the time that Miss Hilton and Miss Mr. Woody had a talk in the car? And this is what is alarming to me that I brought up earlier to you. If Mr. Woody, if, if Woody had a talk with Hilton anywhere in his neighborhood prior to this, knowing that people were watching him, this could have catapulted some issues as well. Do y'all hear this? So. Miss Hilton says specifically, no, this week retracted when we first talked, we first met in the car on Friday. We asked you, is Mr. Mel um, Melnick your attorney? You said he's not my attorney. I haven't even talked to him. Now, let's use some contact clues. He said what he said. I told you on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday that I was pleading the fifth. And. They, that Friday, he completed the fifth and got held in contempt. So they can't be talking about the Friday that they sat in the car together. This has to be a Friday prior. Does that make sense? Am I assuming something not right here? Does that make sense? Okay. Let's keep it going. Now, Mr. Copeland. No, I never said he's not my attorney. I said I haven't talked to him. Mr. Miss Hilton, you said he's not your attorney. You haven't talked to him. No. So he said, I haven't talked to him. And Miss Hilton probably added, well, that's not your attorney in her head. Then we continue to have the conversation. At this point, when they knew that he possibly had an attorney, they were supposed to stop that conversation on Friday. And that's why Miss Love was like, no, no. The conversation that we had with Woody was it had nothing to do with something that a lawyer was supposed to be present for. You see now why Ms. Love reacted like that at the beginning of the transcripts? Miss Hilton had the conversation with Woody. So Miss Hilton, but if you needed him, we could have said, uh, if you have needed Mr. Um, Melnick, we could have said you, okay, just call him. 
So, I mean, that is our position. They was like, you, well, when we were talking, if you needed him, you could have called him, but you didn't. We didn't want you, we don't want you in jail. We just want you to be able to purge yourself by testifying. Whatever your truth is, it is your truth. Just tell the truth. But you just have to answer the questions. We believe that your answer is retracted. Whatever your truth is, it is whatever your truth is. We know what you said before. I don't know what you're going to say on the stand, but what we know is pleading the fifth is going to keep you in custody. That's what I know. Now, how you're going to answer the question is however you're going to answer the questions. I know what you said before. And, I, and this is continue, Ms. Hilton, talking. I know what you said before. So this is when who's going to be the determination of lies when Woody talks? The prosecution. And if he lies in their eyes, it is perjury. So I know what you said before, and I know what you said later. I mean, I know what you said before, and I don't know what you're going to say on the stand because you, I never went into full details about any of that. But basically, she know what you said before, but I ain't telling you what you didn't tell me what you was going to say on the stand. But what I don't want is that you to sit there here in custody. Mr. Copeland, you did it. <laughs> this is Mr. Copeland. He said, you did it. Miss Hilton, I did not do it. You did it by pleading the fifth, Miss Hilton said. Mr. Copeland, you told me, retract it, but you went to the judge with whatever the things call, uh, called you want, you went to him with. You told me that I can't retract it. When I asked the question, I can't say I don't recall or I don't know. You told me that if I plead the fifth, retracted. I mean, something retracted. Why would I plead the fifth to something I ain't do? And I said that you don't know what I said and what I ain't do. And then you was like something. I'm gonna make that make sense. This is Woody talking. It basically, he was like, so you said, if I say I don't recall or I don't know that um, I could plead the fifth. You told me that. And now you're saying something different. And, and he said, and then y'all asked for this immunity. This is Woody. And then y'all asked for this immunity. And I was like, huh? What is this? It was something. And then Friday retracted. Thursday or Friday came. And then y'all going to tell me, oh, we went, to, we went to the judge. And this is so you can testify. If you don't testify, the judge gonna lock you up. So basically, Woody was talking to them and kept telling them, I'm gonna plead the flip, I'm gonna plead the flip, I'm gonna plead the flip, plead the flip, fifth. They needed to come up with a strategy, strategy to make him testify. So they went to the judge and say, Hey, we're giving him this right here, immunity, this, that, and the third. And the judge accepted it on Friday, and I think it was Friday evening or something like that we got to check that okay it was friday after or before i don't know i think it has to be before but it was that friday regardless if it was done on that friday that is not timely and that says a lot okay so this is what woody is saying he said then y'all came to me with this immunity on thursday or friday and i'm like what oh we went to the judge and this is what you got to testify are you going to jail miss hilton right but that was based upon what you retracted. She said, basically what you said to us and now what you don't want to testify. That's what I'm thinking. Mr. Copeland, but y'all told, but I told y'all that. I told y'all that I don't want to testify that. I told y'all this plenty of times. That's what he's saying. Mr. Hilton, no, you didn't. Mr. Copeland, you said, why would I plead the fifth to something I didn't do? And I said, you don't know what happened. So he's like, you don't know what happened. I'm pleading the fifth to certain things. I'm telling you. And they're trying to convince him just to talk, 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 talk. Miss Hilton said, and I said, I don't know what happened. Only you knows what happened. And I said, this is Miss Hilton, but you never said I'm pleading the fifth. You said, what if I do this? What if I do this? What if I do this? Mr. Copeland said, I told you, I said, I'm going to plead the fifth. 
and you said retracted. What would you plead the fifth for something that you did not do? Copeland, like, I told you this plenty of times. This is ridiculous, Miss Bumpus. So if you didn't have immunity prior, is that what you are saying? That you feel like he didn't have immunity prior? So this is Miss Bumpus coming in. She's like, wait a minute. Y'all didn't give him immunity prior to all of this stuff? Oh, she's seeing the strategy kicking in. Mr. Copeland, immunity came Friday, right when I went to jail. Now we figure out when the immunity hit the case. Friday when he went to jail. I knew I saw that it was filed in the evening time. They didn't give him immunity before that. He's been telling them that he was going to plead the fifth. He's going to plead the fifth. Whatever he was going to say on that stand before he got locked up, it was going to be on Woody. Woody was going to not only incriminate himself, but also with criminality, but also incriminate himself in the streets. And that's why he pleaded the fifth. And Copeland says clearly in this export take communication that immunity came Friday right after I went to jail. Miss Hilton, the immunity only came after Mr. Uh, Melnick. So she's trying to change it up. Mr. Bumpus, hold on, Miss Bumpus, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. She's saying something not right here. Miss Hilton. The immunity came after Mr. Melkin sent us the email saying my client is pleading the fifth. That was on Thursday at 6 p.m. But as you, Ms., uh, Mr. Copeland Woody been telling them for Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I'm pleading the fifth. Ms. Bump is like, oh, okay, it was Thursday? Miss mm. Hil um, Hilton. Um, so after that, that was, um, that was epic. He is pleading the fifth. Um, Ms. Bumpus, oh, mm -hmm. Ms. Hilton, we came and we got it signed. Ms. Bumpus, mm, okay. Ms. Hilton, and then Friday morning came. Ms. Bumpus, oh, okay. So we need proof that it was filed on Thursday because Woody's saying it was filed on Friday and, or presented to him on Friday. Do you hear what's going on? Do y'all see how corrupted this is? This is a great read. We are 32 pages in right now um, of 56. Please let me know if it makes sense to you guys. And, you know, are we putting a clear picture here? Hit the like button because these are the conversations that we need to have. Go out, go through these cases in lame terms, break them down in regularity, impartial, and from basically... From Grace Levi, the hood court interpretator's way. All right. You get videos and everything. So now let's keep this broadcast moving. We are three hours and 30 minutes into the broadcast. I guess we'll be finishing about uh, 45 minutes or so because we still have about 20 pages. We're going to read this and then we're going to sum up this broadcast and then we're going to break it down into uh, parts. Okay. And they're going to be different parts. I think I, I can do three parts of videos for this. So. Let's get into it. Let's continue down this yellow brick road. Miss Hilton, so between Friday evening, Mr. Um, Melkin reached out to us, said he was representing him. So, mm, I thought you said Thursday, Mr. Melkin's emailed you and said that Woody was pleading the fifth. So, Thursday, you knew. So, okay, now she's saying, now she acknowledged on Friday, Mr. Mel Melnick reaches out to us and say he's representing him, his pleading the fifth. And, and, and they probably like, it's too late, bitch. We already got it signed. Too late, motherfucker. He can't do that. Excuse me. That's what she said in her head. Miss Bumpus is like, okay. And when was the last time you talked to him before Mr. Melkins got involved? Miss Hilton, we talked to him earlier that day on Thursday. Mr. Bumpus, Miss Bumpus, okay. And then how did speaks it audible to Mr. Copeland? So that is what she says there. Miss Mr. Copeland um says he called me. This is Mr. Copeland. This is Woody. So Miss Bumpus, that one that represents him, okay. I'm just trying to get a timeline. So Miss 
Hilton. Sure, right. So we have been talking since Friday. So I met Mr. Copeland last Friday, I think outside in the neighborhood. You see, I wasn't wrong. They met earlier outside in Mr. Copeland's neighborhood. How dangerous is that? To me, that is unacceptable. Then he came in on Tuesday for court. We talked briefly on Tuesday. All this time, he kept telling her, I'm pleading a fifth. I'm pleading a fifth. This is the times that he told her. And then on Wednesday, he came in. Mr. Copeland. And on Thursday, too. <laughs> Miss Hilton. No, I think he only came two days. So it had to be Wednesday and Thursday he came. I wasn't here Tuesday. It was Wednesday and Thursday he came. And then on Thursday, once I left, it was when Mr. Melnick reached out to us and said, my client is pleading the fifth. And at this point is when we went to the next morning and got the immunity motion. So, but he's been telling you he was going to plead the fifth. But once a lawyer contacted you, you took it serious. We need to see the timeline of when that was filed. Okay. Now, and this is continued. This is Miss Hilton. So she continued on to say, and then we spoke on Friday morning. I handed Mr. Copeland the agreement and let him know that he was immune and that anything he said, he uh, we can't use it. And then Mr. Uh, Melnick came and then we went into court. And no, Woody said that you said, if I say I'll pee the fifth, I'm getting locked up. You try to make it seem like you said something nice, but you didn't. Okay, so Ms. Bumpus, so you are pretty much saying you didn't ask for this? Copeland, I didn't. Ms. Hilton, but we gave it. He doesn't have to ask for it. Ms. Bumpus, I know. I mean, he's just saying and is retracted. Ms. Hilton, right. He doesn't have to ask for it, but to alleviate whatever his concerns were, we gave him immunity. He doesn't have to ask for it. Ms. Bumpus, so if we would have had this, retracted. I'm just saying this is so that he can understand it. I'm walking him through. So um, they retracted what she said. So if he would have had this, so if he would have knew about this earlier, Mr. Copeland would have been making different decisions or had a lawyer on hand earlier before all that communication of what he was telling her. Miss Hilton was like, um, Miss Bumpus, would he still have testified or would he have been able to plead the fifth? Wasn't that what he said, Miss Hilton? If he did not have immunity, Miss Bumpus, yes, I understand that. Miss Hilton, yes, he could have played the fifth. And that's what he did that day on Friday. Okay. And allegedly, according to Woody, they filed and let him know he had immunity after he got locked up. But they saying they did it on Thursday night. You see how something not right here? Mr. Copeland, and the judge not saying nothing. And none of this, the judge is quiet. Remember, the judge is in the room, okay? So Mr. Copeland goes on to say, that's what I'm saying. Mr. Bumpus, that's what he's trying to say. He's trying to say he didn't ask for this. Miss Hilton, but he doesn't have to ask for it. Now, that's why we have given it to him, because that's on us. So now that we have given it to him, it's an order. He can still choose if he retracted, if this is the role he wants to take, then he'll just stay in custody until the trial is over. And when, when we say the trial is over, ever, every last defendant has been tried. And that's not just the six. There's other ones. Mr. Copeland was like, I done did longer time. He like, fuck it. This Copeland, he like, I did longer time. I'm good. I don't care what you try to say. I'm going to jail. This is how much he's concerned. Miss Hilton, all right, Mr. Copeland, I'm telling you that you're literally immune from prosecution from anything else you may say. That's it. So the choice is always up to you, but you want to put it on the road. The state does not want you in custody. Um, what the state would like you to do is purge yourself from and is retracted and this is when we go into perjury versus purge and this is how copeland continued to build the character of incompetent and i don't believe he's incompetent i think he's smart 
That's my opinion. So Mr. Woody slash Copeland says, what does what purge yourself mean? He's like, wait, purge yourself? Perjury? Purge yourself? <laughs> Miss Hilton, meaning that you are no longer in custody and that um, the way that you purge yourself is to testify. This is This is how it happens. And this is what the state wants you to do. We don't want you in custody. I can't say that any other different way, but we don't want you in custody. The only thing that holds you is that you refuse to testify. This is the court. Finally, the judge says something, Glenville. So you don't have any questions and other questions. Basically, if you invoke your fifth, he's like, what are the questions? He's like, that's all you care about is that, Mr. Copeland. I don't trust it. I don't trust it. I don't trust it. I don't know what's going on. I don't trust nobody. I don't trust her words. I don't know what's going on, Your Honor. I'm confused. He's saying he's confused. Miss Hilton, this is your insurance. I don't know if you want to break that down for him. This is Miss Bumpus. Well, he doesn't want that, the court, but he's been given it. Here go the judge, kicking on in, acting non-impartial right you know i'm being sarcastic so here goes the judge comes in finally and he says but he's been given it so that's the challenge mr copeland this um that uh, that if he did not give if he was not given immunity you could invoke your fifth amendment but what the state decided is that that Oh, what the state decided is that they said your testimony is worth more than them at this point in time. And they really want to know what you have to say. So they have made a blank from the state's perspective. So uh, that is redacted. That have made a decision to give you immunity so you no longer can invoke your Fifth Amendment right. He acknowledged what the state tactic was right here. He acknowledged that the rights of Woody is being taken away by this step. So he says, you have to testify. So that's the difference in this particular scenario is that they have taken away. Well, it said redacted. Well, you can still invoke your fifth amendment privilege. You still can do that. But the consequences of invoking is that you will remain in custody. So if you testify, you get out of custody, you stay out of custody until you are done. Mr. Copeland, and if I don't testify, I have to stay until when? He said until the trial is over. Um, this is the court. Until the trial is over. Until all the defendants have been, and that's retracted because he may have said something that he know ain't right. And he says, I got the six that has been right now, and there are another six. And that was the six that we showed you um, yesterday that all pleaded not guilty to that horrendous, horrendous plea deal. Miss Hilton, no, there's another 12. The court, there's another 12 or thereabouts, and they're still outstanding in various forms or other. Mr. Copeland, can I speak with her for a second? The court, yeah, sure. So that's when Copeland, like, wait a minute, how the fuck long could this go on? And definitely, they talking about 12 people. So they take a break here from 1017 to 1033. Mr. Copeland, my question is, I can't ask you a question. Hold on, Mr. Copeland. My question is, and that's redacted, can I ask you a question? The court is yes. Mr. Copeland, so my question is, it's redacted. So what I was just asking her was if I ask, if you ask me a question and you feel as if I'm lying about it, would I still get locked up? Copeland is smart. Woody is smart. Miss Hilton, no. If you, that's retracted. So you are saying you said, for example, I didn't talk to um, Dem Demion, whatever his name is. Well, no, I can't talk about that because the judge is in here. And you are asking for examples. If you said before that the sky is blue, because she was about to say, well, if you said that you didn't talk to Damian, so he's admitting to speaking to whoever this person is, and she was about to give an example. Well, if you admit to talking to him, then let me give you a better example. She said, wait, 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 wait. Okay. 
you are asking, for example, if you said before that the sky is blue and I said to you on the stand, what color is the sky? And you said the sky is red. I'm going to say no. Back before you said the sky is blue. Is this what you are trying to ask me? Miss Bumpus, uh, so explain independent evidence. You remember when they talked about the independent evidence, if they have independent evidence related to what he does as far as murder? So Miss Bumpus come back in like, okay, so explain uh, about independent evidence. If he has, if he says he did something and you know he's not telling the truth, what happens? So that's something different. Miss Hilton, if he says he did something that he did not did not do, then that's the thing. Miss Bumpus, if you believe he did not, so if you believe that he's lying about that, because so if he said I did this and you know he didn't do it and you believe he's lying about it, would you hold him in perjury as he's perjurizing? And that's what they're trying to say. Miss Hilton, then no. If he admits to doing something on the stand, uh, and Miss Bump is like, uh, because he said she is retracted. So Miss Hilton, like, no, it won't happen. If he admits to doing something on the stand, retracted. Miss Bump is like, uh, okay. Miss Hilton, her interest statement is retracted. And then it says, and he did not do that thing, retracted. Miss Bump is said, oh, okay. So you see how they blanking out what they're saying? And here comes Miss Hilton. Miss Bump is like, mm -hmm, I'm listening. Miss Hilton, dark, dark skin with the braids, retract, retracted. I'm going to say, is this the first time you ever said that? So it's a retracted statement. And I'm going to say it. So it's kind of obscure here. I'm sorry. There's a lot of retractions, but this is still making sense to you guys, right? So now this is Miss Bumpus and Miss Hilton going back and forth after Miss Bumpus talked to Woody. Miss Woody. And, I mean, sorry, Miss Woody. Miss Bumpus. Miss Bumpus. And you have independent evidence proving it wasn't him. Then what? So what if he say kill somebody and, and you know he didn't and he, you have evidence that somebody else did it? What you going to do then? Miss Hilton, then nothing. What do you mean? Like, I'm not going to do anything. Miss Bumpus, so then he will be fine? Miss Hilton, yes, but, and that's retracted. Miss Bumpus, so you are okay with him if he got on the stand and said something that wasn't true? Miss Hilton, no, I want him to tell the truth. What have I always said to you? I want you to tell the truth. I don't know what you're going to come out your mouth. I expect you to tell the truth. And if you say something that is inconsistent with what you had said before, then I'm going to ask you, um, I'm going to ask you about the inconsistent statement. But I expect you to tell the truth. What are you going on the stand and do? I don't know. I don't know what you're going to do. I want you to tell the truth. But I will deal with you, with you not retracted. You say something different in the manner that I normally do. He's like, I'm going to hand you. She's like, I'm going to hand you the same way that I normally do. Basically, I'm going to eat your ass alive and I'm going to keep on asking you the same question. Like, this is Russia. Like he said, Mr. Copeland interjects now and says, if I'm saying something different, right, it's retracted. So when the police question me, they done question me every time they lock me up. I don't know how many times that was. I then told them whatever different story I could think of to try to finesse my way out of the situation. I don't recall what I told them. So he's saying everything could be a lie. One lie, make another lie, make another lie. If I lie, if I say this, then that, that was a lie, what I said before. That's what he's trying to say. I damn if I do, I damn if I don't. Mr. Hitman Hilton. Okay, so you can say I don't recall. And that's how that works. I don't recall. Miss Bumpus. And he can say that to every single question? Miss Hilton, I will hope that that is not the truth because I think there are some things that you do recall and some things that you don't. But the things that you don't recall, you don't recall. And then I will go through my process of what I do. You know what she do. Y'all watch her in the court. You can talk to him about what impeachment is. That won't get you locked up. So basically, she's saying if he say an inconsistent statement that she's going to impeach him, not get him locked up, allegedly. And that won't get him locked up. Impeachment will not get you locked up. You can talk to him about impeachment if he says, I don't recall. 
Mr. 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 Copeland, what will get me locked up? Just tell me what will get me locked up. Miss Hilton, what did I tell you? Mr. Copeland, I don't know. I'm confused. Miss Hilton, what you did on Friday, I plead the fifth. The court instructs you in that that was redacted. So she said that what you did on Fridays was going to get you locked up. Mr. Copeland, so the only thing that gets me locked up is pleading the fifth? That's the only thing? Ms. Bumpus, yes. The court inserts, this This is Ms. Hilton, the court ins, um, instructs you, you need to answer the questions. You say, say it again. I plead the fifth. Again, retract it. That's what's going to get you locked up. But if you answer the questions, that will not get you locked up. This is Mr. Copeland. So if I don't want, if, so if I don't, so if you don't want me in jail, why you just don't let me go after the trial's over? Okay? You don't want me to jail. Miss Hilton, you are in jail because you are not answering the questions. The court, because you have been given immunity. There you go, Gainesville, jumping itself in. Miss Hilton, because you have been given immunity, you are only in jail because you got up there retracted. Miss Col Mr. Copeland, this is the response. Well, what about this? I answered the question and you take away my immunity. I answer the questions and I'm pleading the fifth. <laughs> okay. Miss Hilton, no, is retracted after that. Mr. Copeland is a little bit retracted. It says, to question that I feel incriminating me he says the questions that i feel incriminating me so he said something before that and then he says the question mm -hmm. i feel intimidate me that's when he's going to use the i guess plead the fifth miss hilton but that but then that and that's retracted because she's giving him law she's giving him counsel and this is terrible this is a terrible ex parte communication this is terrible on its face okay now mr copeland I won't plead the fifth to things that don't incriminate me. The court, this is Gainesville. The state can still give you immunity. They can give you immunity whatever they want, okay? They can make that choice. I, I don't even make the choice. So if they redacted, like I said earlier, they want your testimony. They figured it redacted that the jury needs to hear what you have to say, good, bad, or indifferent. And what Miss Hilton is telling you is just tell the truth and you know it and let her worry about redacted. I mean, even though you may have said different versions of whatever, that's for impeachment. So he's still guiding the um, witness and giving him law. And that's Miss Bumpus' job. That's not going to get you in trouble. Now, this continues Glenville. What will get you in trouble is that you not redacted is you just invoke your fifth amendment privilege because you have been given immunity or as miss love said this morning remember miss love said if you lie if you overtly lie about something it's like you're telling a bold-faced whomper then they can indict you on that particular charge i mean that particular false statement mr copeland that's what they're gonna do he said, that's what's going to happen. He's like, yo, this is a, a setup. Miss Bumpus, that is what I'm saying. So Miss Bumpus is like, that's what we're saying is going to happen. You will be right back here, Miss Hilton. But if you say something that you know you did not, like you admit to something you know you did not do, whatever, retract it. Mr. Copeland, like murder don't have, like, like murder don't have, like no statue have limitations. So basically like murder, he like murder has no statue of limitation. And that's what you were saying earlier. If he said something about murdering somebody, they got the evidence they could prosecute him. So it's not saying that he said he murdered somebody, but he said like murder. Okay. Miss Hilton. But if you didn't do it, I can't, I can't charge you with something you did not do because I don't have any other evidence, but you saying it, Mr. Copeland, which I don't like and is retracted. Ms. Bumpus, you can charge him with false statements. And this is Ms. Bumpus coming in trying to give him a said, but you can charge him with false statements and he will be back in jail. That is what I'm trying to say, Ms. Hilton. But if I know that you are lying about that, I don't intend to do that. 
if I know right now he's lying, I know he's lying. I'm not going to charge you because I don't know your reason for that. But I'm not going to charge you when I know that you didn't do what they're trying to say you did now. And that can be the part of this. I know you didn't do it. So she's trying to play mind games with him. Okay, this is Miss Hilton. Girl, that's the devil who come with the gift of gab. Instead of her being like so aggressive, like how love is, Hilton is manipulative. And she'll keep asking you questions different ways so you can try to answer it and, and get what she won out of it. That's Miss Hilton. Now I figured out her character because I could not figure out her character. Now, Miss Copeland, but it's up to the judge to do this, right? This is Woody. Miss Hilton, no, it's actually up to the state to bring the charges. The court, no, I don't have anything to do with that. Miss Hilton goes on to say he has nothing to do with bringing charges. That's up to the state of Georgia. Mr. Copeland, can I call? Can I call my family? I I will make uh, I will make the decision right after I hang up the phone. Miss Bumpus, he's saying he hasn't even been able to speak to nobody. Miss Hilton. His sister just called us and it says she and it retracted. Mr. Mr. Copeland, y'all done me wrong. Y'all just hold me in jail. Don't let me get no pen num number. Nothing. No nothing. And Mrs. Hilton says, we don't we have no knowledge. We didn't know that. Miss Bumpus, he hasn't been able to do anything, speak to nobody. Mr. Ms. Copeland, Mr. Mr. Copeland goes on to say the jail system is down, but y'all still putting people in there. And that goes back to Fulton County, oh, Guantanamo Bay jail. That's what they're talking about. OK, Miss Hilton, that part, I don't know. I don't know. We have been in communication with your sister. Your sister actually texted me um, to make sure that you was OK. We told her that you were we physically laid our eyes on you. I've uh I leave it up to the sheriff. I don't know. That's is like a brief pause. Miss Mr. Copeland. So what do you think what she said? He said, so what do you think what she said? What she's saying? This is Mr. Copeland. And then Miss Hilton says, I can't tell you right now. I can tell you right now. So I guess he was like, What did his sister say? Like, what's up? What my sister say? And then she's like, I can tell you right now. And Mr. Copeland. I'm talking about that look, looking me back up. Um, he said, no, I, and then he goes on to, Mr. Copeland moves on after she said, I can tell you right now. And now whatever she told him, that's not what he wanted to know. He asked her, I'm talking about that locking me back up thing. And Ms. Hilton says, we would have to bring charges. There will be no incentive right now. And he was retracted Copeland. Y'all will, y'all will, y'all do it. Miss, and they'll probably try to connect it to the Rico charge. And Mr. Hilt, Miss Hilton says, We already had had this discussion. Mr. Copeland, look what you did to me. You waited until Friday and did this. I done told y'all every day before Friday coming that I was pleading the fifth, Miss Hilton. No, you did not. As a matter of fact, our last, and she goes into something. The court, now the court jumps in, and that's Gainville. Now they seeing the pressure. He's seeing the coercion. He already went over the fact that this man life may be online. The man already saying how long, two years ain't nothing. So the whole court is done. I'm good. They thought about 12 people. God damn. Let me talk to you, Miss Bumpus. And now here goes the court right back into, let's see what Mr. Gainville has to say. Mr. Copeland, Mr. Copeland, let's see if we can get beyond this, Okay. Beyond what is your concern is, you could have invoked your Fifth Amendment privilege. The state could have turned around and said, stop, and had me blank, go ahead and file a motion to give you immunity. He said, so even at that time, they could have did it in the middle of court, allegedly. It was going to redact it. I mean, they make that decision. He's like, it's going to happen regardless. So it don't matter when they did it. The judge is still siding with the state. They decided to make it on Friday. Do y'all hear that the judge now admit that the decision was made on Friday and Miss Hilton playing out lie and said that they did it on Thursday night? 
Oh my God. Now Miss Hilton is a liar and a deceiver. Now I don't like the dark skinned lady. Now I'm mad at her. I didn't have no bias against her. And now I'm pissed with Miss Hilton because she lied. She said specifically that they filed the paper on, on Thursday when she got the email from Mr. Melnick. Remember when they finally took the statement as being face value that he was pleading the fifth after what he said it so many days. Y'all remember that, right? That's why we're breaking this down. This is ridiculous, okay? So this is the judge to continue to go on. They made the decision on Friday. So even if you would have been comfortable testifying and invoking your Fifth Amendment pr privileges, they could have decide, decided you as a witness, they wanted your testimony more than, than do you invoke your Fifth um, Amendment privilege. So they gave you immunity. They gave you immunity. So you got to testify truthfully as to what you know, your knowledge of the particular incidents is. I mean, so they are going to redact it. They could have done that anyway. This is the judge still pressuring them. Even if they put you on stand, like put you on notice, they could have said, stop. If he was right there as a witness, I'm going to ahead and give you immunity. They could have done that. And the judge would have let them. Mr. Copeland, so I can get it in the same type of writing that if I was to testify that if she feels as in I as if I am lying or if I lie about anything that I won't block me back up. She, he's like, can you put that in writing? Because even if they feel like it, they're going to lock me up. He's like, whatever you saying, let's just get back to this. I want this in writing. The court says, let me have that, Miss Bumpus. And um, Ms. Bumpus hands the document to the court. Brief pause. They must have put something in writing real quick. Ms. Bumpus must have moved fast. The court, Mr. Copeland on a two-page of order pursuit. However, no testimony is given by Keith Copeland is required under the order or any information directly or indirectly diverted from the testimony of Keith Copeland given by Keith Copeland as required under the order shall be used against him as Keith Copeland in the proceeding or pursuit for the crime or offense concerning which to testify under this order. So this looked like it was an amendment or something that she did. Okay, so you testify about some aggravated assault or murder they can't pursue you on it because that is what it says in the order okay and then murder has no statute of limitation and he's lying because they already said if they don't have they have evidence if they don't have evidence of the murder that he admits to then they won't pursue him so what does it mean on the other phase okay so okay the only thing that will get you in trouble and this continues that this is the judge interjecting is the next little paragraph, Keith Copeland shall be subjected to prosecution or to penalty or forfeiture for any of the perjury, false swearing or contempt um, committed in testifying or failing to testify in accordance with this order. However, if in the order that Keith Copeland shall not require to produce evidence that can be used, however, it is ordered that Keith Copeland shall not be required to produce evidence that can be used in any other court in any situation, the United States or other states. That ain't say that he can't, it can't be brought up in any other proceeding. It just said that he couldn't, you know, he's not required to produce evidence. Oh, that's a trick right there. That's a fucking trick. That is a trick right there. Oh my God. Did y'all hear that? They try to trick him. So basically, if you commit perjury, false serum swearing or a contempt uh, committed in testifying, that means you just invoked your Fifth Amendment privilege and failed to testify. And you say, I'm not going to testify. All right. So the only two real things you can kind of get in trouble for are perjury and false swear swearing. As long as you tell the truth. Now. As Ms. Hilton and Ms. Bumpus has earlier stated to you, you may have told or been asked about situations over and over again. They may have been chained. What the state is asking is that you tell the version that really is the truth. If they want to impeach you, they can do that. Or if the other side wants to impeach you, they can do that. You won't get in trouble for that. Copeland, you said I will. Because Copeland's still confused. Like, what? You said, I'll get in trouble. 
the court. You will not, you will not, this is the judge. Impeachment is not perjury or false swearing. So he's now trying to teach Copeland what impeachment is when that is actually Ms. Bumpus' job. Okay. This is the law, the judge literally working with the prosecution. Do you hear this all through this document? We are on page 46. We're almost through. Okay. Please hit the like button. So impeach says, um, you will not, you will not. Impeachment is just perjury or false swearing, okay? But impeachment is, I'm going to say, impeachment is not perjury or false statement, okay? So, Mr. Copeland, but she said, I can purge myself, though. And this is where incompetence come in at. And he's like, but you said I can purge myself. So what you talking about? And Ms. Hilton said, no, 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 no. Um, We're saying two different things. Sorry, sorry, stop, just... Okay. Perjury is if you get on the stand and you say just a bold-faced lie, just something that is just wrong. Say you said, I did something, and all the other times you have said, I have not done it. And really, while it's perjury, it's really just an inconsistent statement. So they're going to pick and choose what's perjury and a lie, it seems like, because you can't, it's a thin line between perjury and inconsistent statement, as you can see. It's like, so like, if you get on the stand and say, I did X, but in 2015, you said, I never did X. This is what I'm going to impeach. I'm going to impeach you on everything you said in 2015, meaning I'm going to say, okay, today you said, did I did X, but in 2015, you said that. So this is when someone else enters the chambers. Um, Lucinda Dean, we have a security issue. We need to stop the meeting for a minute. It stopped for about two minutes and Glenville goes out and come back. So this is Lieutenant Dean. Okay. Now, so it starts back up. Miss Hilton, I don't know what was told to you on Friday. And you know, Mr. Me um, um, Melnick said they're going to fry you. Okay. And if you go in there and talk to them, I can't represent you. But she's trying to say, I don't know what was told to you on Friday. I have no reason to want you in prison. You have spent enough time in prison for why yourself, period. So why would I want to do that to you? That doesn't make any sense. I said to you before, I will say it to you again in front of all these people. That does not make sense. Mr. Copeland, you just said I'm going to have to stay in jail until the last. And he's like, man, please. You just said I had to be to you added 12 people to this. Miss Hilton says, if you don't testify. He says, get that part through your head. If you don't testify, that is the only thing that is going to hold you. That is literally the only thing that's holding you right now is the fact that you keep saying, I'm not going to testify. Well, you haven't said it today. I'm not testifying. I plead the fifth. You get up there and you, and that's, that's, that is redacted. I want you to tell the truth. Like I said before. If you don't recall certain things, you can say you don't recall. That's fine. I want you to tell the truth. I don't expect you to remember every single detail from 2015. I just don't. I just don't. No one here does. But what I do expect for you to do is answer the questions so we can get through this, so you can go home, be with your baby for her birthday. So there's, so these dog drivers, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, let me just go back because y'all know I've been reading a lot. This is what freaks Copeland out. Let me reread this. He says, but what I do expect you to do is answer the questions so we can get through this. So you can go home, be with your baby for her birthday, see these Dogs deliver their babies, go talk to your nephew, and do all these things. Mr. Copeland said, how you know about my, my dog? And she said, because you told me. And Mr. Copeland like, okay. And Miss Bumpus is like, what's wrong? What happened? Well, like, what's wrong with you, Mr. Copeland? Mr. Copeland says, I'm stressed at a whole nother level right now. Like, this is crazy. Miss Bumpus said, I mean, can he, uh, I'm saying, Mr. Copeland, I'm weak. Man, I can't, 
I, I can't, I'm not playing. I'm dead serious, man. Like, yo, this is Copeland. He freaking out because it seems like Miss Hilton possibly has been watching a little closer than what he expected. He said, how did you know about my dogs being pregnant? He has the streets watching him. He has the DA watching him. Miss Hilton, this is what our position is. We do not want him in custody. We want him to tell the truth. We want him to testify. That's what will get him out of jail. And you know, you have to make, and that's retracted. Ms. Bumpus, if he decides in two weeks he wants to testify, then what? Ms. Hilton, if he wants to stay in jail for two weeks, then that's redacted. I don't know why would you want to stay in jail for two weeks. I have no idea, Ms. Bumpus. He just feel like he's under a lot of pressure right now, like this second. Pressure, coercion. He's saying in front of the judge. The judge is saying nothing. Copeland. Even at the jail, they're just like, you can't give me house arrest. So he's like, even at the jail, my life is going to be in danger. Either way, like, you just give me house arrest or something. Let me think about this. Miss Hilton, no. You can go home by taking the stand and testifying, and that's what you, and is redacted. And you know that jail is dangerous. We talked about it. Now, they don't give a damn. They don't care because they don't have to be in it. Miss Hilton, there's no, and that's ridiculous. We keep on saying yet, but there is no crime. We keep on saying yet. I don't know who is telling you about a crime. There is no crime. You have done nothing wrong except for not purging. Mr. Copeland, so why am I in jail then if I didn't do a crime? Miss Hilton, because you're not testifying. Mr. Copeland, but that ain't nothing wrong. That's not a crime. Ms. Hilton, it's not a crime, but you're in civil contempt. The court, there goes the judge. How much time and in? Two things, but you invoked your privilege after you were given immunity. That is why you are in custody because you got, you got out and testified. No, because you got out by testifying. So you testify, you get out. Mr. You see how the judge is literally fighting for the, the prosecutor. He knows that Mr. Copeland was given immunity on Friday evening. And he's acting like it, it happened on Thursday or earlier. And he, he's saying, Copeland, you messed it up while you went on there and testified um, Friday. That's why you were locked up because they gave you immunity. You see how he's switching it? They gave him immunity afterwards. Mr. Copeland never knew a no immunity. Or I think he did. What did they say? They said that. Nope. No, he didn't know of the immunity because before the court case, Miss um, Hilton says that um, before he went on the stand, Mrs. Hilton said that he was going to talk to her but the lawyer cut in and Miss Love was mad about that. You remember? So he still never knew about the immunity to afterwards. Does that make sense? Wow. This is crooked, crooked, crooked. And the judge is trying to cover and misconstrue the words. So continuing on what Mr. Glenville is saying, which is the court in this document. That's why I was going to bring, that's why I was going to bring you, retracted. I brought you here earlier today. I just want to inquire about that. You can remain and hold your position and invoke your fifth or not testify, but you're going back to prison. You're going to jail because that's, and that's redacted. So the judge put more pressure and said, you're going to prison, you're not going home. He said, Mr. Copeland, Mr. Copeland, Ms. Woody said, basically, you can't sentence me. Mr. Bumpus, Ms. Bumpus says, there's no sentence. The court, there's no sentence. The contempt is compliance. They want your testimony. That is all they want, whatever that may be. Mr. Copeland, I don't know what this is, Your Honor, Miss Hilton. So listen, you are in jail for failing to testify, the court. Failing to testify. So he comes behind. This is Judge Glenn and say, yeah, failing to testify. Miss Hilton, 
not for nothing else. There is no crime. You you ain't do nothing. You didn't. You don't know if people are telling you what we are going to charge you with, and that's with nothing. We're not going to charge you. The state the state didn't charge you. There is nothing we're going to charge you with. You are only in custody because you decided not to testify. This is it. Once you decide to testify, redacted. This is the court coming in behind them. Remember that. Um, remember that word you were talking about, purge, Mr. Copeland. Like, uh huh. The okay. The, this is the court, and this is the judge. Okay, you can purge right now. Purge. Get yourself out of jail. Just testify. Coercion. Copeland. I can purge. I can get out of jail. I can purge. The court says, yes, just by testifying. Miss Hilton says, not perjury. Because Miss Hilton knows Copeland. She said, not perjury. The court says, perjury means, purge means that you can get out of jail. You can get out of jail, out of custody. Just testify. This is Glenville. Mr. Copeland follows up by saying, and what about the other one? What about the other word, perjury? The Copeland, the court says that's different. Miss Hilton says that's different. The court says that's a different word, okay? So that shows that Woody is setting up a case of incompetence, all right? The And that sometimes can make you sit in Fulton County Jail indefinite, allegedly. Allegedly. Watch our other broadcast. So Mr. Copeland follows up to say, that can get me back in jail? Hilton says, yes. The court said, perjury will. Hilton, it's not redacted. What you are saying is not perjury. It's what you are saying and what we call prior and consistent statement. So he says, your example that you gave me, If what if I said something like, I don't know, you did, you didn't do it. And you said before, you did do it. This is not perjury. This is a prior inconsistent statement. And they all stop because everybody's confused here. Like, uh-oh, is that perjury or an inconsistent statement? Fuck. They didn't say anything here, I think. This is ridiculous. And they're confusing him. Okay, so Ms. Bumpus, you've got to make a decision. If he, is, uh, he starts testifying today... He's going to go home. Miss Hilton, he should, so long as he remain. But if he gets up there and be like, if you get up there and testify, and then we get into, and you start saying, I plead the fifth, we're going to be back here again. Miss Bumpus, but what if he says that he don't recall to everything? He'll be asked. Is that okay? Miss Hilton, I'm not advising that. But so long as he answers the questions, that's fine. So as long as he, and that's retracted. I did, and then Mr. Copeland says, I did these crimes. I'm telling you that. Miss Hilton, okay. I don't know what you're talking about. So Copeland is admitting to doing some crimes or something in this. And Miss Hilton, like, I don't know what you're talking about. We're going after YSL. We're going after them. I don't know. Whatever you say on the stand is what you say, and I'll handle it then. Miss Bumpus comes in and say, I think, and that's redacted. Are you saying what? Uh, are you saying you want to get up there on the stand and say something? Mr. Copeland didn't respond because he's like, damn, like, wait a minute. Because he's stressing now. He's like, wait, did I just say that? That I did do these crimes? Wait, 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 wait. Miss Bumpus. Did we find out if he could talk to his family? No. And they all pause. He still don't talk to nobody all this time. Miss Hilton, I mean, if it's okay, we got the sister's phone number. Mr. Copeland, my, uh, um, Mr. Copeland, as my attorney, you got to, and that was redacted. Miss Hilton, let me, and that was redacted. If y'all want to talk, 
let me go somewhere where I can't hear you. The judge is over there, so just speak low so he doesn't hear you. So they want to talk to each other, and they not he's not walking out the room. The judge is on one side of the room, and his husband's like, let me just walk away. They still can hear everything they say. This is terrible. The court, and this is the judge said, hold on. Judge Ganville handed a document to the attorney, Kayla Bumper, and a... Um, in the chambers with assistant director attorney uh, Hilton, investigator Long, investigator Hamilton, and court reporter Waver from 1053 to 1129. So judge handed a document to the attorney. So it seems like from 1153 to 1128, something was happening. Maybe they were talking, Ms. Bumpus and Copeland. So at this time, okay, we're getting to the end. Okay, all right, this is the court. Mr. Copeland, have you had the opportunity to talk to Ms. Bumpers, your lawyer, and Ms. Hilton, the state, counsel? Have you got any other questions? Mr. Copeland, no, Your Honor. The court, is your, your desire to testify today? Mr. Copeland, yes, sir. The court, okay, all right then. Do you all have some clothes for him? Ms. Hilton, I don't know. Let's go take a look. And they start to look for some clothes for Mr. Uh, Copeland, Woody, for him to testify. And that's when you get everything that happened that we showed you yesterday. All right. That is the full ex parte transcript. Perjury, yes, he was lying on the stand. Purge is to snitch. But they were confusing him with perjury um, and um, inconsistent statements. So it was hard to determine what they would actually move forward on because they were so wishy-washy in their examples. You see what I'm saying? They were literally setting this man up. They set Woody up. This is Woody. So we're going to put who Woody is. This is Woody. This is when 2015, when he talked to the officers and that video went viral and he was just talking like a woodpecker. He's much different. This is Tay Tay. This is the young man who was unalive in Atlanta over the weekend, possibly connected to this trial. Again, this is a full breakdown of the ex parte transcript as well as a full comprehensive breakdown of what's been happening. I do hope that you guys enjoyed this two-part series. This part is four hours and 30 minutes. We're going to break it down so you can just have the ex parte um, reading, and then we're going to break it down where we're going to have um, just a few sessions. So with that goes to say, I want to tell you guys, I love you. Thank you for being here with Grace Levi. Um, hold on. Thank you for being here with Grace Levi. I think I don't want that on the screen. I do apologize. Thank you for being here with Grace Levi, spending your holiday with me, building, learning, being entertained by this YSL trial, because this is something that we're all interested in. I hope I was able to break it down in lame text and give you more details behind what has happened. But until then, I want to Send love and peace to Tay Tay, the young man who was unalive in Atlanta this past weekend. Let's put it on the screen. The shooting in Southwest Atlanta happened early this morning at an apartment complex. Channel 2's Brian Mims is live on Peyton Place. Brian, police say the shot was fired from outside of the apartment. Exactly. And police say they don't have many details about what led up to the shooting, but there is a big police presence here at Peyton Place just off Martin Luther King Jr. Drive. You can see the officers still on the scene after more than three hours. The call came around three this morning and when officers showed up at an apartment at nine Peyton Place, they found a man in his early 20s who had been shot to death. It's unclear if anybody else was inside that apartment, but Police say there were no other injuries. Yeah, let's go. I already took five minutes. Be to yourself. Stay to yourself. Trust nobody. Trust no one. Hey, yo, this is going out to move grandma. 
definitely going out to you, grandmother. One love, rest in peace, let the angels take it. Ain't nothing wrong with a nigga getting his paper. Ain't nothing wrong with it. Don't hate him, man. Listen to the song. Listen to the song. Still waiting on the world to come say. Waiting on the world to say. Now that I reminisce on my reflection, closest reflection as a nigga can get without protection. You never tripped, and even though we had our fights, then every night I'm cussing and busting like it's impossible to get it right. Time alone, away from home, cause I can do that on my own. Looking for more than just another bone. Will I be happy now I'm grown? It seems we have a problem with jealousy, cause you interrupt them while I'm on the phone. I got some business to handle, so baby, you understand. Can spend my whole life up under you, I'm a grown man Could you respect me if I wasn't dripping All up a prison or even worse I could not be here breathing and be comfortable If I was really as bad as they was making You know, nobody could be around me So for me to be this calm, I must have some kind of inner peace And my inner peace is knowing that once everybody takes the time To really see what type of person I am You'd be surprised that I stuck around this long I have to make the life that I do live As happy as I can and try to do the best With what I have You know, live the best life I can live Be as happy as I can be Nothing is perfect for anybody what was I swear I think I figured it out. You know why they don't want us redneck brothers and sisters and the hood brothers and sisters getting along? You know why? Because we'd be unstoppable. I'm telling you right now, we would shut shit down. Why are you detaining me? You about to lose your job. You about to lose your job. Get this dance. You about to lose your job cause you are detaining me for nothing. You about to lose your job.